Wow, we are on a runway here. This is my first experience. And this is your like... 45, 45, 45. Not 45, 4 or 5. 4 or 5. <laughs> we know what you mean. First woman to fly 45 minutes was uh, an American triathlete who uh, came in on the program because their aircraft was overweight. They then selected a lighter pilot. Mm. She was a you know, triathlete. Uh, yeah, okay. nailed but it. That was in America. America. They did it in the desert, yeah. so it's even harder. It's harder. It really? Harder. Yeah. Yeah. Less is it not flatter? Piloting, are we're you in control of how high you take? Oh the yeah. Plane? Oh yeah. Right. We're so, but we're nervous to allow to, you to, to do that because. Right. Uh, none of the aircraft are that proven, they're all experimental wings, so uh, you really have to be quite certain of what you're flying and if you go high you could get caught in a the thermal uh, and in a the thermal you might find that the aircraft starts breaking up around you. I mean birds, massive span birds don't bother to pull a lot of G. If you watch something like an albatross or a seagull, if they happen to meet turbulence, they don't very often, they don't bother, they just let it go. They just dump it. You just dump it and then carry on. Yeah. Because it takes too much muscle and too much strength and too much pain to try and resist it so you don't bother. So because our structures are rigid, we're not we're not uh, we're not changing our air plan, we're not changing the wing area. But it's not to say this this wing here is exceedingly tough uh, and uh, you could probably start taking this higher and higher. How much power do you actually need to lift it? Right, um, I'm old fashioned I'm afraid, so it's around about a third of a horsepower, which uh, trying to put that in my head, it's about 750 watts per horsepower, so a third of that, um, is about 250 watts. 250 watts, does that just take it up? That's to cruise power typically, probably a little bit more to get airborne. Like humans are quite interested in the power of them. Most animals are. For very, very short durations, we're all quite powerful. And most people, for a very, very short period of time, can reduce around about two horsepower. So if you weigh, say, oh, pick a number 60. 60 kilograms times 9.81, which is the gravitational acceleration of making it in Newtons, which is force. So call it 10 roughly. So we'll call that about <laughs> six. <laughs> so, so we'll call it about 600 Newtons times however fast you can climb in meters per second, and that's your power output in watts. Right, okay. okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. What do you do? I'm an air engineer. <laughs> 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 Craft have a particular characteristic of power requirement with weight. So the weight to the power, one and a half, is, and that's the complete weight of the aircraft plus the, the, the whole lift off weight, so that includes the pilot and the aircraft. Okay. So a lighter pilot has a benefit if the aircraft weight is not excessive. Right, yes. Which is the argument about, it's an old argument that people used to discuss and think about a child powered aeroplane would have um, a physical advantage but a slight legal disadvantage. Yes. Um, you're not allowed to put children no. into their place. Why? No sense, no sense of fun, is it? Yeah. Yeah, they I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, to keep the aeroplane up, mm. is a certain power output yeah. you need um, to it's maintain? It's between about a quarter and a third of a horsepower is about average for these. Okay. It depends on how good the propeller is because the propeller isn't perfect and they absorb different amounts of power for thrust. Most of the propellers on these aircraft are floating around about 90% efficient, which is pretty good. Right.
<laughs> I'm driving on an airfield. In an airfield? Wow, it's awesome. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, I should probably get some planes in the shot, like, otherwise it just looks like you're driving the field. <laughs> I'm driving in an airfield while well, we're out. Stop. This music's going. No idea what I'm doing. Well, as long as there's no planes coming in to land, we're okay. <laughs> I think well, it's when you see all the gliders up, it does get a little intimidating when you're driving because they're coming up here. Yeah. We've gone. I'm not really sure which way we go. It's always it's just follow it around. The only one way you can go anyway, right? <laughs> I don't know. There's a runway. Because you said just for, just come back the way you came last night, thinking it, it was, was dark. dark last night, and it was yes, anything. and it was yesterday. Yeah. Us to get up in the plane. Oh, he said you want to go up in the plane. Yeah, he asked what? me if I wanted to fly. Awesome! Day one, Vinny's been asked to fly. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool. You're interested is half of the yeah. battle done. What's the word? It's like I. People want to be around, people want to work with people that, that, want to do stuff. that want to do stuff. People want to be around, you know, especially something like this. They've, they've done it for so many years with it's just the same people. Yeah. Now it's exciting for them that there's so many young people coming through that actually want to do it. My first ever lesson was in a glider. Was it? Yeah. We, were, we, uh, we got airlifted with a plane because you can do it on a winch and it sort of propels you up. Wing here, you can see the tail. Yeah. And it has a rudder on the back. Okay, I've our, our rudders on our aircraft. The whole rudder moves. This tail here, you can see the back a little bit, 10 to 15 percent. Yep. That's, that's that's changing direction. The bit that's fixed is keeping it flying straight like a you know, weathercock on top of a building. So that allows it to fly straight all the time and then just turn a little bit. The elevator at the back, you can set that all moving to trim it, and he's got little elevators yep. that will change the attitude of the aircraft. So that'll uh, pitch up, pitch down. If it pitches up and flies more power, it climbs. Pitches down, takes off the power, it sinks. Okay. So we only, that's all we've got control on the human powered aircraft. On these aircraft, along the wings, they've got flaps, slots all sorts of moving parts. The human part is, you know, doesn't have all those moving parts. Uh, it's a fixed wing. So in order, it doesn't have any roll control. So what you're seeing there are flaps, that increases the lift, but behind the flaps and in other areas, we call, we call things like flap or um, flaps. So this last little section here, we call an aileron. It's outboard here and that can move up and down. So generally they, they don't they don't move one side will always move different from the other. Yep. So that aileron will move one way, the other one on the opposite side will move the other way. Right. And that will now change the wing roll moment, roll the aircraft around. So in an efficient turn you want to bank the aircraft, so you put some roll on it, and turn the rudder together. So you bank it, turn it, and it will go around really efficiently. Um, but on a human powered aircraft, we just don't have those sections. Because our wing is not stiff, if we did that, the wing would just move all over the place. Okay. So you just leave it fixed. Um, so you don't have any of these clever bits on the wing that makes the aircraft more controllable. The sections on the ailerons are right outboard. We only need a very small bit of aileron to do the maximum movement because it's a long arm with a little bit of force. So you know when you're swimming, your arms out there, if you just glide it along, you will feel the natural effects yeah. of what your hands. So if you were swimming along, gliding along, to change your hands, you will have the same effect as those ailerons are not able to twist over. Hey. And it's like the forces. There's the forces of the wing being lifted up. Right. And you go through turbulence, there's forces of the wings being pushed down. There's also forces when you start using the ailerons for twisting the wing. So if I put that aileron up, 
The wing naturally wants to oppose that and go back down again. It finds a neutral spot. So you have lots of structures in here that just stop that wing from twisting. So the wing is always in the same plane, doesn't rotate out of plane. Right. So there's a very stiff beams through here. There's one beam forward, one beam aft, and there's because it's all one plate, it's triangulated with stresses. Now we can't on a human powered aircraft, we can't put all that structure there. It's massive amount of weight. Yeah. So we just have very simple element forces, simple element beams, simple um, very simple structures and figure out about the twist, try and minimize that.